Hello, my name is Wajaha, and today we're going to cover intrusive perception. So get your pen and paper and let's get started. So here's just a picture of the bowel just to remind you. We've got the small bowel here and the larger bowel here. The small bowel um, at the ilium connects to the large bowel at the cecum. Now intrusive perception is when a portion of the bowel um, it telescopes or invaginates into another uh, like I've drawn in this picture. And this is important because two things can happen. Firstly, the bowel can get obstructed, uh, which can impair the blood flow, and this can lead to ischemia. And secondly, the bowel can perforate. Now, this condition predominantly affects young children less than a year old. Uh, it's also the most common cause of intestinal obstruction in children. Uh, and the distal ileum, like I mentioned, telescoping into the cecum is the most common area that this happens. Now that we've covered that, let's go into why this happens. Now, during peristalsis, the wave-like motion of the intestine can get caught on what we call a lead point, uh, and it can cause that part of bowel to telescope. And these lead points can be a number of different things. So I've split them up into two main categories, non-pathological, which is the majority, and pathological. Now, we've got viruses, and in the intestine, there's a ton of these lymph nodes uh, called Peyer's patches, during infection, especially rotavirus or adenovirus, they really enlarge and they, they can become so big that they can become one of these lead points and the bowel can catch on and fold inwards on itself. Now, in older patients, uh, we've got conditions like uh, Meckel's diverticulum, uh, which is a condition in which you get outpouching of the bowels. And if these outpouchings fold inwards, they can become lead points itself. Now, intussusception has some distinct features. So firstly, got intermittent usually 10 to 20 minutes of colicky abdominal pain uh, infants will often draw their legs up to the chest now if the pain becomes constant uh, it's a sign that the bowel is severely obstructed and is becoming ischemic so we need to act really fast with these patients secondly vomiting uh, which can also lead to dehydration uh, and thirdly the bowel can hemorrhage uh, so we can get these blood red current jelly stools uh, that's a keyword that comes up in exams all the time, so remember that. Now, when examining these patients, uh, especially in the right upper quadrant, you might feel a sausage-shaped mass. Uh, and when listening with your stethoscope, you'll hear high-pitched sounds, um, which indicate obstruction. Now, one important point to add is when seeing blood in the stool, uh, especially in a young patient, there are some other differentials to consider. These are infection, inflammatory bowel disease, and other causes of obstruction like foreign bodies. Investigation-wise, ultrasound is quick and easy to organize, and you can see what we call the target sign over here. You can see these circles inside of each other. That's what we call the target sign. Um, we can also use enemas, and I'll go into that shortly. CT MRI scan, like I've written, often more used in adults. And usually we do some basic bloods too, like a full blood count, looking for signs of infection from a high white cell count. Uh, urea and electrolytes, looking for signs of dehydration. Now with the barium elements, let me show you how these work. So as barium flows through the bowel, you can see it fills the proximal part first. And as the uh, barium flows through the bowel, um, it fills these pockets of spaces caused by the intrusoception. And it helps you to really see the full pattern of this intussusception where it's taking place. Now, interestingly, the barium can also push back onto the bowel and help straighten it out. So we call this diagnostic and therapeutic. It's not the greatest, however, uh, because it can lead to perforation and that can cause peritonitis. Uh, so instead to treat, we use air enemas instead. Now, any child with possible possible uh, injury susception should be urgently referred to hospital. Uh, we start off with uh, by rehydrating with fluids uh, and putting in an NG tube to help with feeding. Now, as I mentioned, air enemas are used, um, but they're often ineffective in around a third of cases. So we need a backup plan. And that's when we take these patients to theater for surgery. So if enema fails, the bowel perforates, or the intussusception has been going on for over a day, uh, a laparotomy to reduce the intussusception, or even take out that area of bowel uh, is sometimes needed. Now, um, as always, I've got a mnemonic to help you. Today, my mnemonic is scrub. 
that stands for surgery, colicky pain, red current jelly stool, ultrasound, barium enema. Remember that and it will help you remember this condition. Uh, lastly, just a couple of questions. A seven-month-old infant is brought to the ED with a two-day history of vomiting and diarrhea. Vomit and stool are both unremarkable. His father describes the infant as lethargic and unsettled for the last three days. The infant has also had six episodes of uncontrollable crying where he draws his legs up to his chest for a few minutes at a time. He's afebrile. On examination, the infant appears pale and lethargic and a small mass is palpated in the right upper quadrant. You decide to investigate with a plain abdominal x-ray which shows no sign of obstruction and an ultrasound scan which shows a target sign. What is the most likely diagnosis? So we've got a very young child, less than a year age, with vomiting and diarrhea. Um, we've also got the child infant drawing his legs up to his chest. There's a small mass palpable in the right upper quadrant. Now abdominal x-ray isn't really too good at showing obstruction and that's why we tend to do ultrasound. It's quick and easy as well. Shows a target sign. It can only be one thing and that's intrusive susception. And lastly, a mother brings her 14 month old son into surgery. Since yesterday, he seems to be straining whilst passing stool. She describes him screaming, appearing to be in pain and pulling his knees up towards his chest. These episodes are now occurring every 15 to 20 minutes. This morning, she noted a small amount of blood in his nappy. He is taking around 50% of his normal feeds and vomiting green fluid every hour. On examination, he appears irritable and lethargic, but is well hydrated in apyrexyl. On examination, his abdomen seems distended, but no discrete mass is found. So again, we've got an, uh, another young child um, screaming in pain, pulling his knees up towards his chest. There is intermittent pain every 15 to 20 minutes. There's also blood um, in the stool, um, lethargic, irritable. We know that this is also intussusception. So I hope that really helped. Uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Ask, me, Tell me if you've got any questions or any other conditions that you want me to cover. And I'll be back with another video soon.